I want to congratulate uh, all my fellow uh, inductees. Uh, it's quite an honor. As a builder, um, you don't have many stats. Certainly don't get any medals. All right, uh, and uh, you do uh, get lots of rewards uh, from watching the people uh, that you've worked with uh, get those stats and get those medals. It's a very, very interesting ride from uh, taking my five-year-old and seven-year-old to the ice arena. Uh, and oh, by the way, most of you saw uh, my new group of hockey players that keep me at the ice arena, God willing, for several more years. Um, uh, they all go skating. Uh, I think a couple weeks ago we had the uh, twins out on the ice along with the two and a half year old and a one and a half year old. And I know there was quite a few parents looking and saying, what's that guy doing with his grandkids out on the ice? <laughs> but, uh, I really enjoyed it though. Uh, sometimes they don't enjoy it. We started the Comptoir Hockey Club in 1978 or 79 um, uh, with the idea that we really wanted to run a first-class organization. And USA Hockey um, was uh, uh, very helpful at that time, but it certainly wasn't the organization it is today. I would like to thank, I, I did actually start making some notes uh, hearing uh, uh, Cindy and Bill talk, I figured I better have something organized. Uh, so I want to thank MAHA, Michigan Amateur Hockey Association. I want to thank USA Hockey. I want to thank the Ontario and Canadian Hockey Leagues. I want to thank uh, the um, uh, East Coast Hockey League people and then especially the NHL uh, for giving me the assistance that I needed every step of the way in being involved in different hockey teams. But I especially want to thank the hockey parents uh, who I watched over the last 35 years devote most of their uh, money, uh, their time, uh, taking their kids to the hockey rink, play the wonderful game of hockey. Uh, it's a, just an amazing thing to watch. I know we built an outstanding uh, arena um, out in uh, Plymouth, Michigan. It's just a gorgeous place. It's warm, all right, if you're a parent watching the game. You can actually get decent food if you'd like to eat something, all right? It's a wonderful place, and I built that place mainly in honor of all the hockey parents that have spent so much time and devoted so much of their lives to having kids play hockey. When we started the hockey program in 1978, uh, I wanted to have a program that was different, uh, one that uh, the kids really got great instruction right from the time they got on the ice. And uh, a lot of those guys that started that program with me are here tonight. Um, Kevin O'Rear, Mark Craig, Real Turcotte, um, all were uh, coaches on our first hockey teams. You couldn't get three different philosophies in the same room. Uh, Real uh, was an outstanding skills coach. Uh, he probably had one of the most exciting midget hockey teams in the history of the sport. When we would go into Canada and play in towns like Toronto or Ottawa or Hamilton or Drummondville or St. Leonard's, God knows where, we would have hundreds of people come and watch this midget hockey team play. It just happened to have a uh, player named Patty LaFontaine and a player named Alfie Turcotte and Ally Afraidy. 
all on the same hockey team, along with a bunch of other kids, all of which ended up playing either major junior hockey or went to college and played college hockey. And uh, Real would rather uh, lose a hockey game eight to seven. He finally told me that one day because I couldn't figure out why he never taught defense. He said, Pete, you don't understand. I'd rather lose a hockey game eight to seven than win it one to nothing. Right behind him came a coach named Mark Craig who'd rather win a hockey game one to nothing than lose a hockey game eight to seven. And he coached like it. Exactly the opposite. Uh, and then there's Kevin O'Rear who took a... a um, I think it was a squirt hockey team, nine and ten year old kids. Uh, and two of our better players, a guy named Pat Peak and a kid named uh, Brian Ralston, decided to go and play on another team. And all of our parents gave up. And by the end of the year, our little team won the state championship and we beat the team that took our two best players. And they were our best players uh, by a, a bit of a margin. And it was Kevin's dad was one of the wisest people I've ever met. Kevin's dad told me one time when I was uh, exasperated about the way certain people were behaving. Kevin's dad said, Pete, there's something you really don't understand. And I said, what is that, Ken? And he says, you don't understand, the world suffers a shortage of horses' heads. <laughs> yeah, I was about as quick as you guys were on that one. <laughs> all right, and I said, you know, Ken, that explains it all. I also was complaining bitterly one time about um, picking a team to go to the Quebec tournament. There were no rules. And it was being run by an organization called the Michigan National Hockey League that got to send one or two teams to Quebec, which was a thing most 12-year-old parents, parents of 12-year-olds wanted for their kids, was to go play in the Quebec Pee Wee Tournament. And I said, Ken, why, why don't they have rules? Why don't we just say at the start of the year that if this team is in first place by this date, they get selected to go home? Oh, he'd say to me, Pete, you don't understand something. He said, if you don't have a set of rules, then the people running it are far more powerful than if they had everything spelled out. I went, geez, that's right. Ken O'Rear is also a fellow that told me that uh, when we're trying to think of a name for the hockey program, he said, just call it CompuWare. I said, Ken, that sounds... Silly. We're a software company. Compuware. I said, it doesn't even sound like anything to do with hockey. He said, Pete, just keep it Compuware. And geez, he was right. Even myself the other day was thinking about Compuware Hockey and going, God, it's been around a long time. It's a pretty good name for a hockey organization. <laughs> so when you see your dad, Kevin, uh, tell him, how much I appreciate all the help he gave me. Then the hockey parents, uh, there's a couple parents here tonight, uh, and we keep leaving Jimmy off the videos. Why do we keep leaving, leaving Jimmy Carson off these videos? Because Chuck and Maria uh, were my favorite parents of all time. I, we used to fight like crazy. But that's because we're Greek, all right? Um, but, uh, and Jimmy was a fascinating young man to watch play hockey. Uh, very, very talented. And then also sitting in the audience is uh, Jim Rutherford, who was there shortly after we began the program, 30 some years ago. Jimmy called me the other day and said, Pete, it's been 30 years. And I said, geez, it really has been. I said, you were really young when I first met you. He said, so are you. Uh, but we've, we've gone from, and still go, from the uh, depths of losing to the thrill of winning. And 
he only gets mad at me once in a while, and I only get mad at him once in a while. Um, I, admit, I think after the first game of the season, I went racing halfway around the arena, sputtering like crazy because we had just lost the game three to two in overtime that I thought we had won for sure. And by the time I got there, I couldn't remember why I was that mad. Anyways, um, this, is, this is a great, great honor. You never, ever, ever expect that uh, you're going to get an award like uh, this. To be, get in the U.S. Hockey Hall of Fame was never, ever in my mind. And oh, by the way, I have a coach sitting there. His name is Mike Volucci. Coaches are... Uh, uh, Plymouth Whaler team is maybe one of the finest coaches I've ever had the pleasure of working with. Someday, someone's going to offer him a job in the NHL, and he will be one heck of a pick. And then I'd like to thank my wonderful wife, Danielle, who stepped into this whole hockey thing. Uh, and God bless her, because... Uh, she really doesn't understand it, didn't understand it, all right? And she just absolutely loves taking the kids to the rink with me on Saturdays. Uh, and uh, uh, Danielle, thank you very much. Anyways, um, it, like I was starting to say, you never expect to get an award like this. Uh, I really, really... Uh, appreciate it, uh, and I really don't know what else to say. Thank you.